Volkswagen said yesterday that it wants to supply Ford with 1.3 million EVs per year. Ford said, nah, no thanks, but we will take your ID4 and turn that into an electric SUV until we can make our own. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to see you on the Electric Viking. My name's Sam Evans. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. If you're new to the channel, there's more than 2,800 videos in less than two years. Check some of those out. And if you're wondering a bit more about me, why I'm here in Bangkok in Thailand, even though, yes, I'm an Aussie, well, I'll put a link in the description to our GoFundMe campaign, which talks about why I'm actually here. Ford has turned the Volkswagen ID4 into the Ford Explorer EV. I think the Explorer EV looks better than the ID4. Now, I don't think it looks amazing, but I think it looks better than the ID4. Do you agree? What do you think? Ford has electrified another classic blue oval vehicle. It's obviously taken the Mustang name i don't really like that personally but they anyway they did that they turned that into an ev mustang mach e and now they're doing the same thing this time it's the explorer which has been reinvented as a battery powered suv for europe where it will share showroom space with the mustang mach e so why have ford done this what's the purpose i mean really is it really that different in size to a mach e well it's odd that Ford now has two similarly sized five seat electric SUVs for the European market. And even stranger that they're entirely unrelated. Instead of spinning the Explorer from the Mach-E platform, Ford created its newest SUV, well, it didn't really, by pairing with Volkswagen. Underneath the square jawed exterior is the ID4, which is sitting on an MEB platform. But the truth is, it's not just the MEB platform. There's really mostly Volkswagen DNA in this car. Your average European driver wouldn't know the fact that this is actually an ID4 reskinned to be a Ford Explorer. Ford avoids the ID4's curves for a much tougher, square look that better fits with the Explorer name. It looks like a much more practically sized car for families. There's subtle styling references to the North American Explorer, which Europe, but not the UK, receives a plug-in hybrid version, including the C-pillar treatment and the design of the rear lights. So this car, it's a little bit confusing because it was people used to think of the Explorer as being a plug-in hybrid because it is in some countries. Obviously in Europe now, they're changing to make it an EV. Now, when it comes to the interior though, and the actual infotainment system for it's gone, yeah, no, Volkswagen, uh, keep your infotainment, keep your software, you can have that stuff, you know, it's 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 really good, Volkswagen, it's great, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll use our own software. And that was a good choice. Now you're probably wondering, why am I saying that? Well, the reason is because Volkswagen has a pretty bad track record with software in their EVs. They didn't used to have a bad track record with software, but it all started when they decided to do software in-house. And well, it bricked all their cars. They had tens of thousands of EVs sitting in parking lots for months because they, um, they wouldn't drive. There's the obligatory freestanding digital instrument cluster beyond a chunky, vaguely square steering wheel in the new Explorer. But the real focus of the interior is the huge 14.6 inch portrait touchscreen. So it's a similar size to the Tesla Model 3 screen, but it's been turned from being horizontal to being portrait. That's about where the similarity with the Mac E ends because the Explorer's touchscreen is housed within the main dashboard rather than floating in front of it. I think the dashboard does look quite nice. They've done a good job. The screen is canted backward and can even be moved to account for drivers of different heights. And there's a secure space behind it for storing valuables. There's also a physical rotary controller poking through the bottom of the screen as there is in the electric Mustang. And the broad center console, which offers enough storage space for a 15 inch laptop, meaning it's quite big, looks more like something you'd find in a traditional combustion engined SUV. Rather than the open plan design you get in many EVs, including the Volkswagen ID4. So that kind of takes up a little bit of space. That said, it's still a bigger car on the inside from what I can see versus the ID4. So under the skin, the Explorer does share a lot of details with the ID4. Ford's press release didn't outline exactly which powertrain and battery options the Explorer will have, but Auto Express says that your Explorer range will start with a 168 horsepower model, which has a single motor and a 62 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give the car 218 miles, which is only 351 kilometers of range, but it only charges at 130 kilowatt charging speed. To be honest, it's a pretty mediocre option. Um, 
I was disappointed to see those numbers. I mean, really, 130 kilowatt charging speed and only 218 miles of range. I think they could have done better than that for the base model. But hey, maybe it'll be really affordable and I'll eat my words. Now, if it is affordable, I mean, if it's under 30,000 euros, then I'd be saying, hey, awesome. Even if it's under, say, 34,000 euros, it will still be worth it. But I don't think that it will be. What other options are Ford giving you? Well, the next model up is definitely much better. It's got a much more powerful motor, 228 horsepower, 228 horsepower, which comes out at 170 kilowatt for you Aussies and everyone else who uses the metric system. And it has a 77 kilowatt hour battery. So a much bigger battery pack. It gives the vehicle 335 miles of claimed range. Seems unlikely, seeing as that's way more range than the ID4 with this battery pack, which is 540 kilometers. Now, if it does have that range from this size battery pack, it means it has extremely impressive efficiency and much better efficiency than an ID4, which is strange considering it's a higher vehicle and it would be therefore less aerodynamically efficient. But who knows, maybe Ford have pulled off some amazing feats. Now, there is also a faster dual motor all wheel drive version. Of course, that one will be heavier, but it has 335 horsepower and a range of 305 miles or 491 kilometers. So basically add an extra motor, add some more power and your range drops by 50 kilometers. So that's about normal, around about a 10% decrease for having that extra motor. The Explorer brings new technology to the brand's European lineup though, including assisted lane change and also clear exit assist, which provide warnings about approaching cyclists when parked. Other gadgets fitted as standard include a driver's massage seat, dual zone climate control, keyless entry, and a hands-free power tailgate. It actually sounds like a pretty good car. The short range version, in my opinion, sounds uh, not great, but the long range version, I absolutely would consider it. Would you let me know? Though there's plenty we still don't know about the Explorer, including how much it will cost when orders open later this year. It looks like a really strong car, a really good car actually, except for that obviously abysmal sounding entry model. The other models sound really good. Now, of course, it's mechanically similar to the Volkswagen ID4. In fact, it sounds like it even uses ID4 motors. And this isn't Ford's only EV it will use that will be made pretty much by Volkswagen. Well, mostly. The Explorer will also be followed by a sportier EV vehicle based on the Volkswagen MEB platform and an even smaller Puma EV built from Ford's own EV platform. So it sounds like they're gonna bring out basically an ID3 and then a jacked up ID3. That's, that's my guess there. They'll use the platform that for the ID3, which is like MEB, of course, but a shortened version of the MEB platform, which is quite heavy. That's why I'm curious as to how this car is achieving such impressive efficiency from a 77 kilowatt hour battery. How is it getting this kind of range when traditionally Volkswagen electric cars get less range than the competition because their efficiency is lower because they're quite heavy. The MEB platform is a heavy platform. Now, what do you think of the Explorer EV? Would you consider one over the ID4? Personally, for me, it hands down. I wouldn't even look at the ID4 um, for various reasons. I don't really like the look of it. I like the look of this. I like the specs of this. In the long range version, I like it. I'm, I'm actually thinking Ford could have a winner here. What do you think? Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, my friends. Bye-bye.